It's great to be joined today by Blake Crouch, who is an author, screenwriter, producer of Wayward Pines, Good Behavior, and also author of Dark Matter, a novel that I pretty recently read. Uh, Blake, it's so great to talk to you. I, I was absolutely uh, riveted by Dark Matter, and I read a lot of uh, different types of books. And one of the things I found really interesting about it was um, the sort of scientific basis that underlies a lot of it. And it really relates, it relates to a lot of pretty hard science that has been worked on in the science world for, for quite some time. So I'd love to just first hear a little bit about how you came up with the uh, basic concept for the novel. And you're probably better at explaining it without spoiling anything than I would be. So I'll, I'll leave that to you. And then how do you think about the science in the writing that you do? Hmm. Well, the idea from, for Dark Matter really came from the science itself. I Probably 10 or so years ago, I read an article about quantum physics and I, I was fascinated by it because it, it really talks about this whole part of the world that we don't see, that we're not privy to, which is particle physics. And the strange things that matter does when we're not looking at it. For instance, it sometimes appears to be in more than one place at a time. And it just had caught my fascination, but it's very dense, complex, kind of a tough nut to crack in terms of understanding the science. So I spent the last 10 years or so while I was writing other things that like wear pines and run and good behavior, just doing my due diligence and trying to understand quantum physics, first for myself, uh, because I just thought it was fascinating. But the more I got into it, I started to realize this could be the premise of a really interesting novel if, if done the right way. And I, I just needed to spend enough time to understand the science so I could incorporate it into a book in a way that wasn't confusing to the reader, but was intriguing. And Dark Matter, <laughs> in some ways, it reads like a time travel book, but there, there's not actually time travel taking place. Rather, it's travel sort of between contemporaneous universes or instances of the universe. Uh, did you start with that as the concept and then work out the story and characters, or did you start maybe with a character or a plot idea? Uh, I started with the idea of the box itself. Once I had a grasp on quantum mechanics, I was wondering how would I write something that allowed a character to move between worlds? And the notion of the box came to me as I was actually brainstorming something else. And it was such a strong visual image, the idea of this box in a hangar with light shining down on it. And I mean, one of the, one of the interesting things about quantum mechanics is to make particles exist in multiple places at the same time, we have to put them in isolation. We can't look at them. Uh, you have to turn the temperature down to the, about absolute zero, there can be no outside interference. And once you do that, they're moving across different realities. And, and I just wanted to scale that up. So I had an idea for this box. And, and once I realized that that was my way into the book, the rest of it came pretty easily. Do you start knowing the full story arc and how it's going to go? And I think that with Dark Matter, it's particularly relevant because of, again, without giving anything away about specific plot points, because of the development of the story, it seems to me, as someone who cannot write fiction to save my life, um, that it would be very difficult to start writing this without having a sense of where it's going to go and ultimately end up. Well, I always have a sense of where the books are going. I, when I start, I at least know what's happening up through the midpoints. And I might have an idea or two about the last act, the third act, and what happens then. But that almost always changes. For Dark Matter, um, when I was selling it and I was explaining to publishers and, and movie studios what I thought was going to be happening in the third act, um, that ended up changing dramatically uh, to what it is in the book. And I'm not going to spoil it because I think it, it's a lot of fun when the reader encounters that plot twist. But you know, it, it's funny, I, I was looking back, the way I came to that plot twist is I was looking back through all of my writing journals and I, I spend several months just taking notes on, on a book before I start it. And typically when I get ready to try to finish the book, I'll go back and I'll just look through my notes and, and just to see, have I missed anything? Were there any kernels of uh, genius in there that I just forgot to put in the book? And I was really struggling with the third act of Dark Matter. 
And then I went back and like on the third day I had been brainstorming it, I had just dashed off this little note uh, about what happens to Jason when he gets back to his world. I mean, that's all I'm going to say. And it was exactly the end. But I remember writing it at that point in time and thinking, oh, that's just too crazy. That would never work. And it ended up being exactly what the book needed. But I had to write the most of the book to realize that. So plot lines aside, there's some pretty, pretty dark stuff uh, in in dark matter that that is experienced by the protagonist. Um, you know, I was thinking as I read it about how we often hear this idea that comedians are often actually depressed, dark people who are in difficult places in their life and have suffered through a lot. Uh, I mean, where, how, how does your personal background connect to some of the darkness and, and difficult stuff that exists in dark matter or does it? Yeah, I mean, I, I it's funny. I think a lot of crime fiction and and horror and thriller writers are actually some of the happiest people, hmm. <laughs> even though they write the darkest stuff. And it's, it's a inverse thing from comedians, I think. Um, no, but in, in a lot of my books, it's sort of, I, I think of it as therapy in reverse. And I don't really understand what I'm doing at the time when I'm writing the book in terms of what am I working out in terms of my own issues. But by the time I get to the end of the book, I have a pretty clear sense of, oh, well, th this is why I was writing about that, because I was mm. clearly going through this thing in my life. Um, and it's not something I try to look too closely at during the writing of the book, because I think it would be, it would overshadow the plot and the characters and all of that stuff I was trying to, to pull off. Um, but it, I, it's something I've been more and more aware of uh, over the last several books. I want to talk about some of your other projects, but real quick, are you experiencing that there's some people confused between your novel and the TV series by the same name based on a comic book that's sort of a space opera? The other day I mentioned to someone I'd be interviewing you. They said, oh, I recently read the book and I haven't yet seen the TV series on sci-fi, which of course is another thing altogether. Is that is there any interesting backstory to any of that or confusion you've seen people have? No, no. I mean, I think some people are who have just heard the names uh, might think it's my book uh, spurred the uh, the TV show. But no, I, I think if I recall, that TV show was in development when I sold the book. I mean, now almost three years ago. Yeah. So you know they were doing their thing, and you know I was working on this book. I mean, I. Hopefully when uh, when and if uh, the movie comes out, there won't be any more confusion. OK, so let's talk about the Wayward Pines trilogy that was adapted into a TV series for Fox. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan was the executive producer when you he also hear... directed the pilot episode. I'm sorry. He also directed the pilot episode, also directed the pilot episode. Correct. So yeah. when M. Night Shyamalan, you find out is going to be involved in a project of turning something you wrote into something for television. Is that hugely exciting or do you also share uh, do you also have some concerns that it will become more something in the style of M. Night Shyamalan than what you orig originally sort of conceived it to be or somewhere in between? Um, I think, well, I, I wasn't really that concerned because I think Knights in my sensibilities are actually very similar. And the more I've gotten to know him, that's become apparent. Uh, our storytelling instincts happen to line up in a lot of instances. And I think that's one of the reasons he was attracted to Weird Pines is because it has this huge twist that no one sees coming. Um, and it was funny when we had first sent the script for the pilot episode to him, uh, offering it to him to consider coming on board to direct the pilot episode and, and be an executive producer. He read the script and as you know, the first seat, the first episode, ends um, with Ethan Burke trying to drive out of Wayward Pines and not being able to. And it's just this big cliffhanger moment. And Knight had said, uh, as long as they're not all dead, I'm in. <laughs> so I think he's got this uh, sense of kind of the big sweeping plot movements. Um, I don't know. I, I still remember going to see The Sixth Sense when I was in college and walking out of that theater just blown away by just that audacious storytelling. So I, I was thrilled uh, when he came on board and even more excited to when the show turned out to be as good as it was and we were able to find that audience. Do there sometimes have to be sort of candid conversations where uh, it's sort of communicated to you? Listen, we understand this is how this plot element or scene or or story component is in the books. 
But here's why it just can't be this way when it's on television. Are there some components that are like that? Yeah, often it's I think it's me telling um, the writers and the producers that because, you know, there's a instinct sometimes where where and I know it often stories are told. That's the opposite of what I'm going to say, but where, where people are trying are trying to be too faithful to the material and not being willing to take a big uh, departure where it needs to. And I, I think that's one of the reasons uh, I've been able to work well with Hollywood is because I, I'm not precious about my book. Once the book is finished, the book is its own thing. And while clearly in every project I write, like there are scenes that absolutely should be a movie or should be in the TV show. But then there are other scenes that it really only works in prose and it wouldn't work visually. And I'm aware of that uh, in, in the production process and often trying to you know, steer people away from being too faithful to the source material. Blake, before we let you go, are you watching any TV shows now? What, what do you watch for fun? What am I watching right now? Um, I just watched Fleabag on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, a really funny, uh, scathing British comedy. Love it. Um, of course, I've been devouring the new season of Twin Peaks. Mm -hmm. Twin Peaks was a big inspiration for me growing up. It was, I mean, it basically, I wrote Wayward Pines because of Twin Peaks because I thought it would never be, that a third season would never happen. I just wanted to write something that made me feel the way Twin Peaks did. Uh, I, I think I think that is one of the coolest, most beautiful things that's ever been made. Film or TV. Uh, so you know, that's those are the two things I'm kind of into at the moment, and I'm, I'm just trying to finish my next book. All right, we've been speaking with Blake Crouch, author, screenwriter, producer of Wayward Pines, Good Behavior. He wrote Dark Matter. When can we expect the next book? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I am hoping sometime, uh, maybe late next year. It, it just depends. I, I need to. I'm not finished with it yet. I'm, you know, my these books are are taking longer and longer. There's there's a bit of science in the new one, and it is it is a very serpentine, complex, mind bending story structure. So I'm I'm really taking my time with it because I you know I I want to I want to do right by this idea. Awesome. I look forward to it, Blake. Thanks for taking time to talk to me today. My pleasure. Take care.